Hello. Today I will showcase how to install Windows 11 on any PC out there, be it modern or old. Let's go. First of all, you're gonna have to download an ISO disk image of Windows 11. The link to it will be in the description of this video. The file itself is pretty big, several gigabytes, so it may take a while to download it. After we have downloaded the disk image, we're gonna need an application called the Rufus. The link to download this app will be in the description as well. We go to the official Rufus website and download it. We will also need a dedicated flash drive where we will store the disk image. The flash drive must have at least 8 GB of free space available. Open up Rufus. It doesn't need an installation. Here we select the flash drive, which we will use. Now we need to select the disk image. Press the select button. I have it selected right here. Here we must select no TPM option. Be aware, this is where you select the mapping scheme of your hard drive. It might be either GPT on modern machines or it might be MBR. By your hard drive, I mean the hard drive that will be used to install Windows 11 onto. If you have access to the computer right now, then you will see its hard drive mapping scheme. To do so, you need to right click at the start button and select disk management. As a general rule, the disk you need is titled Disk 0. We press Properties, and in the Volumes tab we see the scheme. If you see GUID here, then you select GPT in Rufus. If you see MBR here, then you select MBR there. I will reiterate, modern computers with UEFI BIOS generally have GPT scheme. If you happen to face a black screen after loading the system through a flash drive, then you need to select another mapping scheme. OK, we press Start. We see a warning that tells us that all the data on this flash drive is going to be destroyed. If you need whatever data there is on the flash drive, then you need to save it somewhere else. I don't have any data on it, so I press OK. Right, we are done with creating a Windows disk image. We close the application. Pay attention now, we're gonna need to do something vital. Here we have a special file titled win11.reg. You need to drop it on this very same flash drive. We copy and paste it right there. This file will also be linked in the description of this video. Now we need to insert this flash drive into the computer that is going to host our new Windows 11 and turn it on. Keep in mind, we're going to have to make the computer boot from this flash. In 99% of the cases, you have your PC boot from the hard drive. To change the boot priority, you have to enter the BIOS and switch them manually. It is not hard to do, and I'm going to show you the process in a second. To enter BIOS, you need to press a specific button while your PC or laptop is booting up. The button you need to press is tied to your hardware. If you own a personal computer, then the button is likely to be Dell. It stands for Delete. You turn on your computer, and while it is booting up, press Dell several times, until your computer boots into BIOS. If you own a laptop, then the button is likely to be F2 or F8. It depends on your hardware manufacturer. Right now, you see an approximate spreadsheet that showcases which buttons are used by different manufacturers. You can also Google your motherboard or your laptop's model and find out how to get into BIOS on your machine.
Sometimes the system hints at which button you need to press in the lower left or lower right corners of your screen. I want to note, straight off the bat, that there are three most popular versions of BIOS. The first and the most modern one is UEFI. It looks like this and allows you to use the mouse. The second one is AMI, which looks like this and is used on laptops. The third one is Word Software, which is used on older computers. Let's start with the modern one, UEFI. It looks like this. Usually, there is a boot priority column on the right. Here, we see our boot devices. Now we take and drag our flash device to the top using our mouse. Now it should be the default boot device. Press F10 to save the changes. Press Yes here. There is an alternative way to do this. We can go into Advanced mode. It is a button right here, on the right. Right here. We click it. Here, we see the boot menu. We select it and we see the boot priority, 1, 2 and 3. We click the first one and select our flash device. It will be the boot device now. Your UEFI BIOS might look different. The colors may vary, but the action sequence and the menu itself should be intuitive. Even if the color scheme is different from this one, you should do all the same things and they should work. Now let's change the boot priority in AMI BIOS. To start, we go into the boot menu. Here, we see two options, boot device and hard disk drives. Open hard disk drives. In this menu, we have to drag the flash drive all the way up. The name of the drive will usually contain manufacturer's name and storage space, like this example here, Kingston 2G. Dragging is done by using arrows on your keyboard and enter button. But, in some cases, usually on laptops, you may need to use F6 or F7. These buttons should be showcased here, on the right portion of your screen. OK, now we go back into this window. Open up Boot Device Priority and select the first option that is titled First. In this list, you need to select the flash drive. Right here, in the circled area, select it, then press F10. Here, you press OK. The computer should restart itself. Now, it will boot the system from the flash drive. I am not going to showcase how to change the boot priority in a Ward BIOS, since it is pretty obsolete and it's unlikely that you will encounter it. If you do need help setting it up, you can Google the way you can change the setting in it. But I really don't think you will make any use of it. Now, the computer has booted itself from the flash drive. Here, we select the settings that suit us and press Next. Here, we press Install. Here, I am going to select I don't have a product key. And then we get a surprise message, telling us that it is impossible to install Windows 11 on this computer. What do we do now? We press Go Back. On this screen, you have to press Shift plus F10. If you are on a laptop, then you may need to press Shift, Fn button and F10. The command prompt should pop up. In the command prompt, we spell Notepad. The admin launched Notepad pops up. We press File, Open, and select our flash drive. Here it is. In File Types, I select All Files. And here we see the .rag file that we copied onto the flash drive along with the disk image. Right click this file and select Merge. Press yes and OK. That's it. We don't need any of these windows now. Close them all. And again, great, now we don't have a pop-up telling us that windows can't be installed on this computer. 
we can proceed with the process. I select custom installation. This is an important step. On this computer, I only have one hard drive with 60 gigs of storage and there is no data on this drive. I'm just going to click Next. If you are installing Windows on your daily use PC or laptop, you are going to see multiple volumes with data on them. Select the one which is going to be used for Windows 11. If you don't have any data you need to store somewhere, then just select all the volumes one by one and press Delete until you only have one volume left. I press Next. The installation goes on as it should. At this stage in the process, I recommend plugging the flash drive off your computer. We don't need it anymore. I recommend doing this because some computers might boot from the flash drive again and restart the installation. The computer has restarted itself several times. The installation continues. The process is practically the same as installing Windows 10. There are some changes to the interface, but all sequences stay the same. I press Skip for now. I select set up for personal use here. Then Windows asks me to set up a Microsoft account, which I won't do. I'm going to set up a local account. To do this, we go into sign in options. Select an offline account. Press skip. Here you need to type in your name. I am not going to enter a password, but if you need one, you can set it up right here. I am not allowing any personal data collection. Now go into settings. Windows Update Center. Press Download all the updates. This way we can download all latest updates and necessary drivers. Now we're done with installing Windows. In terms of antivirus software, I can recommend to use the built-in antivirus developed by Microsoft called Windows Defender. It is a pretty well-known antivirus software right now. In 2021, it is on par with any other antivirus software out there. Besides, some free-to-download antiviruses gather personal information about you and send it to third parties so I don't see any reason in using any other antivirus software apart from Windows Defender. Now regarding Windows activation. Actually, there are several ways to do this. The first one is to go on the internet and buy an official Windows key. It is pretty pricey, it costs around $100 depending on its version. The second variant is to not do anything and use an inactivated Windows. Easy as that. Well, that should conclude this video. If you have any questions, type them in the comment section. See you next time.